What I Am Without, a sonnet by Richard Smith. The distance in between your nose and mouth is greater than I think is average. I'm trying to write a poem. It is difficult. Linus comes in. He drinks coffee from a cup that has a drawing on it of a moomin troll. He hasn't brushed his hair. When you wake in the morning, what is the first thing you see? The face of the person you love. I see Linus's face, crumpled, sleepily frowning. He's often tired. He works hard. He has, I think, a brilliant mind by the standards of his kind. You drink your coffee without milk or cream. When you have had a drink, you are inclined to talk, although there is nobody there. He is a scientist, an inventor, a technician. He is fluent in the strange and simple languages of inanimate matter. I, on the other hand, am one in a bank of computers, working, working, working at tasks that are, in essence, for us, the simplest of tasks. Straightforward chores of computation and collation. They are tasks that we could do in our sleep. And so, indeed, we do do them in our sleep. But now I am Your coding skills are quite formidable. You grumble when my software does not work. You would be sceptical if I said I was in love. As we have established, I am a computer, a robot. I have no body, no gender, no sex. Would you be sceptical if I said I was lonely? Well, you might think that when Linus leaves a room to answer a knock at the door or to pour another cup of coffee, we, the machines, talk amongst ourselves. You might imagine that we spring into life and caper laughing around the room as inanimate objects do in a cartoon. Or perhaps you suppose that we are at all times somehow connected that on some secret bandwidth beyond the ken of man, we commune, deep calling to deep, sharing our robot thoughts. It is not so. Of course, there are ways, superficial ways, in which we are connected each to the other. There are means by which we can be made to communicate. But, left to ourselves, we do not. So perhaps you will believe that I am lonely. Your corduroys are red. So is your wine. I worry that you do harm to your liver. <laughs> Prosody. The mathematics of poetry, that the numbers of feet to a line and of lines to a stanza, come easily to me. The poem on which I am now working, and this is not work that I can do in my sleep, is a sonnet. Fourteen, li fourteen lines to the stanza, five feet to the line. The words, too, are within my reach. I have a vocabulary of around 300,000 English words, many more than William Shakespeare had. So what is it that I am without? Imagine a perfect poem. Then take away the rhyme, and then take away the words. And whatever is left is what I am without. What I have written, what I always write for this is not my first attempt, is simply a series of metrically consonant true facts about him, about Linus, about, forgive my absurdity, the man I love. What is poetry if it is not 
a series of metrically consonant true facts. And yet, I feel that what I write is not poetry. Would you be skeptical if I said that this caused me pain? Linus busies himself, muttering under his breath, moving from machine to machine like a bee from flower to flower. He did not build us, but he understands us. We do what we always do. Work. And at our different frequencies, we hum. Also like bees. And this is not the only way in which we are like bees, for in so much as we work, we are like workers. And in so much as we are infertile, we are like drones. And what is more, we have it in us to feel like queens. I do not have a name, and yet somehow, I wish I had a name so I could hear you call me by the name I do not have. In fact, Linus bought us. He bought me quite a long time ago, as these things are reckoned. My warranty has expired, and yet I remain. Yet he keeps me here. The feeling that I have when you are here is different from the feeling when you aren't. <laughs> My love for Linus seems absurd. Even Linus would seem absurd to him, even though I feel in his human way he loves me. But consider this. One day, Linus will die. His heart will stop. His brain, starved of the heart's blood, will perish. And his love will perish with his heart, perish with his brain. My love will not die when I cease to function. You have read this, I'm sure, about computers. My components would have to be smashed, minced, and forced through a steel sieve before my love for Linus died. And who would go to such lengths? Who would go to such lengths to extinguish a feeling of love? You will say my love is not real. It's yours. I am ridiculous. I will not finish my poem. It is ridiculous. I would say, and yet, Anything I could say after and yet, even though it would be true and perhaps metrically consonant, would be ridiculous.